Okay, today I'm going to show you how to build a SharePoint list inside of SharePoint, track key initiatives or whatever you want to use the, the SharePoint list for. They're very flexible. And then hook Power BI up to that SharePoint list and build a dashboard on top of that. So let's dive into it. When you're ready to do this, the first thing that you need to do is actually create a SharePoint list. So go to the homepage of your SharePoint or create a new SharePoint if you don't already have one. Now, if it doesn't look exactly like this, don't worry about that. Just go to the homepage and then you should see an icon that looks like this that says new at the top. Click the drop down and you will see a list option. So hit list. Now, you can see there are a number of different pre-built templates that are already built inside of SharePoint. You can also create a blank one and create your own columns. Or you can, if you've already created a list and you want to copy it and then edit it, you can start from an existing list that you've already created. Or you can, Im you can import Excel or CSV files and, and have those columns become columns in the SharePoint list. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to choose one of their pre-built templates. I'm going to go with Issue Tracker. And when I click on Issue Tracker, you can see that it shows the issue, issue description, priority, status, uh, assigned to, date reported, issue source, images, associated files, issues logged by. So it gives you an option to... Um, it shows you what the different columns that, that you have inside of this template are. So then I just hit use template. Uh, I'm going to name it issue tracker. Um, I'm going to, I want to show it inside navigation. What that means is will you see it over here on the left hand side. Um, sure. I want to give it a description if you want to, and then hit create. From there, it is going to create you a new list. And inside of that new list, it's going to have all of those pre-built columns. Um, that were already included um, inside of the template. Now, I'll go into, in a different video, I'll go into more depth on SharePoint lists. Um, but for the sake of this video, what I'm trying to show you is how to hook a SharePoint list up to Power BI and use it to create reporting. So I'm going to stop the video for a second. I'm going to fill some data into this blank issue tracker, and then I'll turn it back on and I'll walk you through the process for actually connecting to Power BI. Okay. I just added two things onto this SharePoint list. I only did two because the, the point of this list is, to, or the point of this video is to show you how to how to create a list and how to hook Power BI up to it. I'll do a more in-depth video on actually using lists and the different ways that you can use them. I may do a couple videos there because there's a lot that you can do with these. But just to, to point out a couple of things, since this is an issue tracker, I made up a couple of issues that had to do with um, contact centers. Um, I assign them to me and Ben. Um, so if you make a if you make a field value for people inside of a SharePoint list, it actually hooks into uh, Azure Active Directory. So your Active Directory, if you're in a Microsoft shop, which you are if you're using SharePoint, and so um, that's that's cool because you can assign actual people to it and set up alerts and things like that off of it. But anyway, long story short, I put it in a couple things just so we have data to refer to. If you were actually using this as an issue tracker in in the real world. You would obviously track your issues using this. You would update it as you as you made uh, changes and as you made adjustments. And then you know leadership would use the Power BI that I'm about to show you how to do as a tracking mechanism to keep a pulse on the issues that are ongoing. So once you've got your SharePoint site hooked up, you're going to open Power BI if you want to hook up to it. And um, when you open Power BI you're going to have um, a couple of options. Um, get data. And when you go to get data, you are going to, you can just search for share and it's gonna bring up three options. You want the SharePoint online list and you're gonna hit connect. And then it is going to ask you for the URL. And um, from there, you're gonna copy the URL from your SharePoint and you're going to paste it in. Now, if I do the whole URL, you'll see I get this little error bar. Uh, it doesn't want all that. So you want to delete it to the base SharePoint. You don't even want to be specific about the list itself. You want to delete it to the base SharePoint. You're going to hit OK. It's going to ask you for your credentials. 
Some of you might be set up on anonymous. You have to use your Microsoft account and you're going to hit sign in. It's going to sign you in with your Microsoft credentials. So you're going to hit that and then you're going to hit connect and it is going to connect you through your Microsoft credentials to um, SharePoint. And then what it's going to do is it's going to show you all of the assets that are inside of that specific SharePoint URL that you put in. You're going to find your list or the name of your list and then you are going to click on that and from there you're going to hit transform data and when you hit transform data that's going to open query editor and it's going to bring you into um, your issue tracker right here and what you're going to see is that there's a whole lot of fields that you don't actually need but the core fields like our description are all here and so what you can do is you can just start uh, removing columns and you can remove columns until you get down to the columns that you want and I don't want that I don't want that I do want date reported I don't want any of these null columns. Um, I don't want any of this stuff. Um, modified, created, I'm going to keep. I don't want any of these that ID stuff by that. So I'm going to remove all of those. And then um, one thing that is interesting is you'll get to these fields. Um, you can you notice here is the first one. They're linked fields. And so what you want, if there are fields that you don't have, like if there are basic fields here, so I don't have like assigned to in the columns that we have, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the field values as text and um, you can unselect all, but then you're going to select the ones that you want inside of the field values as text because basically there's an underlying table and you're going to expand that underlying table I want assign to um, because that's the one that I want to add so I'm going to click assign to and I'm going to hit OK and then it is going to give me a field values as text field value uh, so you just click all of the ones that you want and you can see it adds a step into your applied steps over here you're going to change you just change the name to assigned to hit OK or enter and then now like once you have all the fields that you want you can delete all of the rest of these underlying tables um, so basically the, what you're trying to do here is just build your applied steps to get to um, the fields that you want and then you want to update the fields that you want so you know use transform make sure that if it's a date and time field that you're you have it, the data type as date and time um, and then um, you're going to update all of that until you have the data the way that you want it. And now that you have the data the way that you want it, your data is ready to go, right? And then you're just going to close and apply. And from here, you have a data set. It's automatically loading in. If you hit refresh from here, it's going to um, continually refresh based on whatever new is in the SharePoint tracker. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for just a second again, and I'm going to build a couple visuals. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do that. And then I will turn it back on and show you how it refreshes, and then I'll show you how to publish it and put it on a scheduled refresh. Okay, you can see that I made a little visual here, not the prettiest thing ever. Um, doesn't have to be. There's only two things, and this is an example, but I created the visual on top of that data. Now, for, for demonstration sake, so I'm going to quickly jump back to the SharePoint list. I'm going to add a couple of new things. So I'm going to add another one. Um, I'm just going to make up stuff for here. Test issue one. Um, new issue is the description. I'm going to say this is a critical priority. I'm going to say that its status was uh, in progress. I'm going to assign it to myself. Uh, I'm going to say it was reported on Let's say I got to move my own picture around here for a second, but I'm going to say it was reported on January 8th so that we have two on the same day. And I'm going to say that it was logged by Ben 
and then I'm going to save, right? And so I added it to the list. So now we got another one on the list. Now uh, I'm going to hop back to the Power BI. I'm going to hit refresh. And what you will see is that it'll pull, it'll, it will now pull that in, right? So it updates the um, tracker um, or the dashboard um, to have the new data point. And same thing will happen if you update statuses on existing ones. And so what this allows is you can create a list, a SharePoint list to drive a workflow, trigger a workflow, to track things, uh, to do a lot of different functions inside of your organization. Uh, when I ran process improvement team, we used it to track our process improvement projects. And so we would track fields around project due dates, the ROI or the, the business results that we anticipated from our process improvement projects. And then we built a dashboard on top of that that would highlight um, how we were doing so that we could communicate the value of our team out to the organization by showing clearly in a dashboard um, um, what we were doing. And so that's that's an example of how you can overlay Power BI onto a SharePoint list, but you're not done yet because if you want to use the reporting, obviously the SharePoint list itself is going to be used by operators. It's going to be used by people who are doing the work, who are in there running the process, who are updating each of those fields to track your issues or whatever else you're tracking with that list. And then probably people in leadership are going to be looking at the dashboard to monitor it and see what's going on. And so if you make the dashboard, you've got to publish it. And uh, if you have a, sure, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Oh, good. I didn't really want to do that. Uh, sample SP list. And then you're going to publish it. Um, if you have a workspace that you can publish it to, then you can go ahead and do that. I, I'm just going to publish it to my workspace. And then um, once you publish it, by the way, if you make edits to it, you do it in the PBX file, which is the desktop, and then you just republish it under the same name. It'll ask you if you want to overwrite the existing one. You say yes, and it'll just update it. Um, but anyway, I went ahead and published it. Now I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to actually open it on the web. This is where you'll give access to the leaders that are going to be looking at it. So you can use share right here to share it with other folks in your organization. Um, but one of the important things that you've got to do is if I, if you go to your workspace and then you can click, so every, everything that you publish has the report or the dashboard itself, which is signified by this icon. And then it has the data set, which is signified by this icon. And so if you click on the data sets and data flows, so what you want to do from here is you want to hit this button that says scheduled refresh right here. So you're going to hit that. And then you're going to go down and you're going to look at the scheduled refresh. But it's not going to let you have that option because it's going to give you an error. And it's going to give you an error like uh, we can't test your data source because we don't have your credentials. So just like you had to put your credentials in when you hooked up to the SharePoint list on the initial one, you've got to do your credentials here. So you're going to go edit credentials. You're going to choose OAuth2. You're going to do organizational. And you're going to sign in. And then it's going to pull up your Microsoft account again. You're going to hit your Microsoft account. It's going to validate your credentials that you have access. So basically what Microsoft does here is it makes sure that you have access to the SharePoint that you're pulling from. So if your uh, Active Directory profile has access to the SharePoint list, then you're able to hook up to it for a scheduled refresh. Then you just hit on and then you can um, set a daily cadence. You can add times. So let's say that you wanted to update um, multiple times a day. I forget how many of these you can add. I think you can add six or eight um, times for refresh. But basically what this is going to do is it's just going to cause your dashboard to refresh multiple times a day. And then you can publish it. And then so you can apply that. And once the scheduled refresh is applied, if you go back to your workspace, um, if you go back to your workspace and you look at the data sets, You'll see on this one, because we just scheduled a refresh, you'll see when the next refresh is. It's at 1 a.m. And so this is good for stuff that gets updated overnight systematically. Obviously, if it's a SharePoint list, you probably want to refresh it multiple times during business hours. But what this means is that now the people who are working in the SharePoint list doing the actual work can just update everything in the SharePoint list. And then leadership and the people who are looking at the dashboard, their dashboard is always going to be updated on a regular cadence with new information and refresh from there. Once you do that, you're done. You're good to go. I hope that was helpful. I feel like I uh, flew through that. Um, I promise that 
my next two videos, I will do a more in-depth walkthrough of building some basic visuals in Power BI and how to make them much prettier than the example that I used in this video, um, which was which was very basic just for the sake of time. And then I'll also do a video on SharePoint lists and how you can actually leverage those really effectively to drive workflows inside of your organization. So hopefully when you pair those two videos with the video I just did, you'll have a really good combination of things that will allow you to use SharePoint list to drive pr processes and procedures inside of your organization and then have a report reporting layer that'll provide transparency for different levels of leadership into that process. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, if you like these types of videos and you think you can learn from them, hit like, hit subscribe, leave some comments if you have questions or if there's other things that you would like to see. But overall, thanks for interacting with the channel. Appreciate all you guys and we'll see you on the next two videos, uh, which will cover Power BI a little bit more in depth and SharePoint. Thanks.